right, we got Mike Corzim, but the dark truth behind the NBA's expansion drive. NBA Commissioner David Stern. Mike Seattle. The Board of Governors had voted to add four. That's kill, Neil. The expansion committee originally recommended three cities with Miami and Charlotte Orlando Spirit, Miami, Miami Heat, or Minnesota. The NBA is taking bids from cities on awarding a new team. We know how phenomenal of a sports town the city of Seattle really, really is. Seattle will, will be one of those markets that will circle. Getting out of Seattle. Why is anyone talking about Seattle and Las Vegas? How about Alaska? They need an NBA team in Alaska. I know some NBA players, they love to fish. Alaska going on, it might not be a bad place. They need to put a, put a team in Alaska. Bad move. Everybody just assumes, oh, when the NBA expands, it's going to be Seattle, Las Vegas. Do you see yep. in the near future more expansion teams? I think it makes sense over time. In one week, the Lakers made more TV money than the Grizzlies did the whole season. There's no doubt there's a lot of great cities we're interested in the NBA. I'm pretty sure That's why we need Alaska, man. Put an end to all that. It's been a long time since we expanded. The idea of the NBA expanding has always seemed very fun. And right now, it seems like a no-brainer. It certainly is always a concept that we've looked at with eager eyes. I mean, Alaska is better than Denver, right? Out, it feels in Milwaukee like and Indiana. Whoop you do? The move. It feels like he put a NBA team in Utah crying out loud, bro. Might as well put one in Alaska. But trust me when I say I love talking about the excitement of a new <laughs> NBA team. We got a team in Utah, bro. And Seattle are the current heavy betting favorites to take on new NBA. Hampton Roads. What the heck is Hampton Roads, bro? Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Louisville, San Diego, Vegas, New Mexico. Where's Alaska? Bro, you act like Alaska's not part of the United States. Franchises. They need a team in Alaska. We also have wild card favorites. And now the logo will be tough City, too. Kansas City, Louisville, and Vancouver. The field? What's the field? Could benefit big time from Sound like Las Vegas expansion. somewhere? However, it's like I almost hate to say it, but what is not talked about is that NBA expansion certainly comes with a price. I think we can all agree. We only want the NBA to oh, going to be more money for the NBA. Positive and fun direction. We only want a product we want to root for. We want entertainment. But did you know that after the years 1988 and 1989, the NBA felt like they were in a great place. They added four teams to grow their sport only. This no-brainer decision had huge ramifications. The NBA took on more that they could handle, and by 1996, the league's scoring average had dropped by more than 10 points per game. Fans were outraged by this, understandably, and things actually got so bad that in order to fix their new problem that was caused by expansion the nba actually shortened the three-point line <laughs> so i can score more points bro that's crazy they did that back in like 97 or something like that for one season 95 to 1997 are we prepared for something like the nba scoring average to drop by 10 points bro let me let me do that in my era bro i'm shooting 60 percent from three 60 60 what's up guys mike here and i want the nba to expand i want to see two new teams in the league but also if not 100 the research i do for this video it's gonna be like a free throw i get i came in here wanting to believe and i still do because if we're being honest i think the consensus is that people do want nba expansion but if i'm being honest nba expansion so far if we look at recent history no curry horribly for all of us including the fans you may remember the now extinct charlotte bobcats a team so bad that the color in the Hornets. In my head is forever associated with losing on a historic level. We will get to that. We are going to get into a ton here, actually, because the NBA has expanded 11 times total and five times since 1980, which means we do have a lot of past history to work with when we ask some very important questions. Extinct franchises, scoring plummeting. We do not want this. But of course, with expansion comes some huge, huge positives as well. Without expansion, we wouldn't be here with 30 teams. And between 1966 and 1976, the NBA went from nine teams to 22 total as the league entered the post-merger era. But really, the question is, if the NBA had a 2023, 2024, or 2025 expansion draft, what rules would they have in place now? Well, in order to give us an idea of that, we have five expansion drafts that have happened from 1980 and on, and in all five of those drafts, we have had roughly the same rules. And those rules are that the other 30 teams would be allowed to protect eight of their players total. Eight is a very large number that we will get into. From there though, the two expansion teams would then take turns drafting from the pool of eligible players with only two rules. One, they can take only one player from a single team. So if the Las Vegas Lucas took Jeff- <laughs> 
Denver Nuggets, they cannot also take DeAndre Jordan later. And two, there is no salary cap during this draft. So if a player like Ben Simmons and his massive contract was to be left unprotected, the Seattle Simmons could be born. Just kidding about the name, but Ben Simmons ending up on an expansion. <laughs> Seattle Simmons. Well the NBA also always gives a big time draft pick to each expansion team, but the range of that pick does vary. The 2004 Bobcats were given pick number four, and in 1995, Vancouver was given pick number six and Toronto was given pick number seven. If I had to guess, I would say that because the NBA lottery is now broken down into the top four, we would see picks number five and six given out. That would be my guess. And to me, any pick in the four to eight range is fair. Those are draft picks that give teams a chance to hit on a legit young star, but also the Victor Wembenyamas of the draft, the players that the teams that, if we're being honest, just struggled an entire season to get. Those players are still up for grabs in the draft lottery. The expansion teams are not a part of the lottery they are given draft picks after at the end of the day we definitely want potential young stars to build around but again it's definitely not fair for houston rockets fans to watch a team win around 20 something games and then the expansion team is given the number one pick the real problem with the nba's expansion rules and the dark truth i will say at this point is that if we take a look at the last eight expansion teams that the nba has added we find that in their first four years they average 24 wins per season do any of us want to watch that? Do any of us want be to trash. watch that? Be trash! Dang! Averaging 24 wins the next What's the point of this band and the team's gonna be trash? It sounds very fun, but once you add that 24 win season, who's watching? And then if we continue- What if every NBA team had like a positive record? Then what? On after you that, still gonna miss the playoffs. We look at 10 years time, you win 50 we games. Remember back in like the early 2000s, you win 50 games. You were only an 8 seed, brother. One franchise. You only get you a 9 seed. You still wanna play him, brother. You know you won 50 games. What do you do? I understand it should be a struggle for an expansion team to come in and compete, but I don't think this type of serious, tremendous Dang, struggle wipe your face. Do any favors. The goal is not to just add two teams, it's to add two exciting teams. It's to add two new exciting markets. Sure, Charlotte just rebranded as the Hornets, but Vancouver lost their team because of how bad they were. During their first four seasons as a franchise, the Grizzlies averaged 14 wins. It is yep, I heard no they were super trash. They to push them out. After the NBA's last mass expansion in 1994 the los angeles times actually had a headline read the nba moves to eliminate ugly ball that is what basketball was being called <laughs> how do we possibly fix this also before we move on it needs to be brought up hilariously the change in shortening the three-point line did not work in any way teams ended up attempting about five more threes per game the very next season but because a lot of the players were just not used to shooting threes as part of their regular offense the league's scoring average actually went down by a full four points per game the next three years until the NBA gave up on this and <laughs> back to its original back when David Stern 1997 this actually happened three points I feel like David Stern wasn't afraid to try things Adam Silver is more hesitant but he's not afraid at the same time that makes sense somehow scoring across the board went down would the league have kept this three-point length if their experiment had worked possibly like they said talking about with the John Moran situation Adam Silver so only spent them like 25 games, but David Stern probably would spend them the whole season. What do you do? And that would not have been like hesitant. So how does the NBA accomplish what we need here? An expansion that gives new life to the league, not a slog, horrible 24 win team that no one wants to go and see play. I'm sorry, Bobcats, but all I'm seeing is orange. Come on now. And we've heard the theory that the NBA is in a better place with its overall talent pool, but the eye test shows us in the NBA playoffs that several teams already are lacking depth, several great teams. So I would say in order to make expansion teams more competitive out the gate if we are going to be adding two more teams i don't want to be watching a bunch of horrible losers i think in order to make expansion teams more competitive i think the nba should give each team a year notice that an expansion draft will be taking place and then they should follow the rules of the disaster draft in the event of a disaster where a significant portion of an nba team tragically passes away the nba franchise that was affected would be able to draft from a pool where teams can now only protect six players that is a pool that is much, oh, much better and i will
will show you that difference right now. With a pool of only six players protected, going through each NBA roster, if two new expansion teams were added, they could end up with lineups that would look like the following. Keep in mind here, I went and played GM with each team and protected six players from their final 2023 roster. For instance, for the Hawks, I protected Murray, Trey, Collins, Hunter, Capello, and Okongu. So someone like AJ Griffin might be able to be taken. Same with Sadiq Bey. Overall, running through a simulated draft with six players protected for a simulated Las Vegas team, we could have Dennis Schroeder and Alex Caruso starting alongside Kevin Herter, Obi Toppin, and Jacob Podol, with young prospects such as Moses Moody, Jackson Hayes, Nikola Jovic, Mark Williams, and Jalen Smith. Meanwhile, for a Seattle team, we could be looking at Ricky Rubio and Bruce Brown starting, along with Luke Kennard, Bol Bol, and Andre Drummond, and then they could have young That's a mid-ass team. Give him a star. Why, why do you have no stars? Protecting why y'all put them on like at least one all-star? Some mid players. Have to make some really hard choices, but overall, do these rosters seem overpowered or unfair? I feel like they would give us what we'd all want. Nobody's real current roster would be destroyed in the current NBA, and we'd have two somewhat. Man, got dunked on by Jokic, bro. <laughs> Who didn't even, didn't even jump, bro? And he dunked on you. Teams was protected. The talent level below that is really just not great. And we have seen in the past that it can get very ugly very quickly if teams are forced to draft from that talent pool. So I'm hoping, I am hoping we do switch to six players. We will see. I do want to know what your guys' thoughts are down below. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video like this. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You are awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're